you will accept this comment and by the survey. For this video, I want to give you guys some advice about what you should study um, if you plan to live and work here in Japan. I've made some similar videos to this topic, but I want to kind of get straight to the point and answer a question that seems to be reoccurring both in my comment section and in my emails. So before we get started, I want to tell you guys I'm not an expert on what you should go to school for. I'm not an expert on working here in Japan. I have not received like the top teaching salary or the top salary for working for a non-teaching job, etc. I have not worked in every industry here in Japan. I'm only telling you from my own personal experience as well as what I have heard from people that are working different jobs than I myself have personally worked. Everyone's experience will be different depending on your country of origin, your personal looks, whether you're physically attractive or not, your age, your marital status, whether you have children or not, your accent, um, and I think I've already said this, but depending on where you live in Japan does make a big difference. So, there is no one size fits all for everyone, and of course, where you choose to apply to also makes a difference. If I were you, as I said before, I highly suggest that you get some type of degree in something in relation to education, whether it is early childhood, elementary, etc. You cannot go wrong, but if I had to choose one degree, I would say elementary education. This is because, generally speaking, it's right in the middle, and most of the teaching jobs you get in Japan would either be elementary school or early childhood. These are the ages in which people are most serious about having their children study and learn English, particularly at international schools. And as far as private lessons go, most students are generally elementary school age. It's better for your certificate to be a little bit over the age group that you're teaching than for it to be under or significantly above. But if I had to choose one or the other, I would rather it be, I guess, right in the middle or under than to be too far above. You might think being able to teach older people is better, but some people see it as you possibly having difficulties with teaching children. A lot of people that are teachers, especially here in Japan, believe it or not, actually cannot stand kids and don't like children. So, that is something that you want to be mindful of. I would not personally study anything that is not in relation to education if you plan to be here a long time or for the rest of your life because, generally speaking, you're not going to get a job working in any of those fields. You can do that one exception to the rule that does get that job, but as I've talked about before, generally any non-teaching job or anything that's not related to English or customer service or anything else or IT, they will normally hire a Japanese person that can speak English at a native fluent level versus hiring a foreigner that has learned how to speak broken conversational Japanese or business level Japanese. They just feel more comfortable with Japanese people. Yes, there's some prejudice, racism behind that as well, but I'm trying to keep this very short or as short as possible because this video is going to get long. So, I recommend getting a degree in elementary education and I do recommend that you eventually pass the JFPT in two at least. But do keep in mind once again, this type of stuff is a waste of time and a huge waste of money if you don't intend to live in Japan long term. If you're only planning to be here for a few years or you're coming here to meet the love of your life, you have a baby for Japanese men, men or whatever, I ain't gonna judge you, but if that's the case, I do not recommend investing so heavily um, and getting a degree in something that you may or may not like, as well as putting all of that money or taking all of that time to pass the JFPT for a language that you're probably never going to use. Japanese is essentially only useful within Japan. Even Japanese people are aware of how important it is to learn English. Generally speaking, when Japanese people do business with anyone else outside of Japan, they already know how to speak English. Thus, your Japanese language skills kind of go to waste unless you're doing something like translating. But translating jobs are not easy to come across and the pay is generally low. Also keep in mind that the salary in Japan is fairly low in comparison to the US dollar. The average person here only makes about 25 to 35,000 USD, whereas the average salary in the US is between about 50 to 65 ish thousand dollars. That's a really big difference. So, if you are someone that plans to take out loans, keep in mind that you need to have a way to actually pay those student loans back. And working a job, you know, with a music teacher's, teacher salary is not going to be enough to do that. If you have a degree in education, it makes it really easy for you to sell and market yourself to, employ to potential employers and companies because you don't have to really go into a lot for your you know, resume or when you do interviews, it's self-explanatory why you want this job 
a self-explanatory why you would be a perfect fit for the job because you went to school and study, you know, this particular subject and field. And of course, as you build on, you know, um, work experience, it just makes your resume look more and more better, or better and better, more and more better. You get what I'm saying. So that is the reason why I would suggest that there honestly isn't any other degree that I would recommend. Um, to, of course, there's generic things like business or psychology or history, language, etc. But again, those are jobs that you're not going to, you know, really be doing. So, for example, I made a video talking about why getting a degree in Asian studies is kind of a waste. They don't care about your knowledge of Asian history. They want people that teach English. And even if you're working in a non-English teaching job, they are pretty much only hiring you to either give the international look to their company or because they plan on using you for your English language skills. Don't get me wrong, there are indeed jobs here that you can work in Japan that don't require teaching or English and are completely in Japanese. But again, they're not easy to get and the pay is generally low, if not the exact same salary, thus it's not really worth it. However, as I've talked about before, I would never suggest that someone, I'm going to contradict myself here, so listen, I would never suggest that someone goes to school and study something, especially not something that's going to put you in debt for years and years and years, if not for the rest of your life. Um, to go to school and study something that you don't want, you do not want to just think short term, um, you know, about your stay in Japan. You want to think long term. This is your four, six year, eight year, however many years, master, doctorate, whatever you choose to do, degree. You don't want to get it based off of your temporary feelings and love for anime or that Japanese girl that you met online. Because what might happen, like how it does from most people that come here and think they're going to stay here forever, you're going to come to Japan, realize how hard and difficult it is, give up, and decide you to go back to your home country. Or maybe your wife is here, you'll get married, have children, and then decide that you think things are easier or better for you back in your home country. And I hate to be that person to say that, but I'm just being so honest. I talk about how pretty much all of my friends that I had back in college, they've all moved back to the US or to whatever you know, European country they're from, like Denmark, the UK, etc. They get tired of being here, it becomes stressful, it becomes expensive, and they choose to pack up and leave. And the last thing you want is to have a degree in something that's difficult to get a job in, in your home country, or to be stuck working in a field that you're not interested in. So maybe, yes, yeah, it's easy to find a teaching job in your home country, but do you really want to be a teacher to children in your country, or are you just getting this degree to easily find a job here in Japan? Think about it. Also keep in mind that having a degree in education or anything teaching related is not necessary. Let me repeat that again as I've said before. Having a degree in something in relation to education is not necessary in order for you to work in Japan. It gives you the one-up on other applicants for the most part. It gives you an advantage. It makes your interviews much easier to do, but it most certainly is not necessary. And most job applicants here in Japan have degrees that are completely irrelevant. A bachelor's degree, uh, excuse me, a bachelor's degree is only a requirement by, by the Japanese immigration and government in order for you to work here in Japan. It is not a requirement to get a job here. But don't be fooled. Most companies do say that they only want applicants with four-year bachelor's degrees. That's meaning your spouse visa, student visa, or you know, permanent residency or whatever type visa is not enough for these positions, especially higher than jobs. There's always exceptions to the rule, and you can find places that will hire you, even although they ask for a bachelor's degree. Generally, a place that is desperate and doesn't have enough applicants, especially if you're living in a countryside area or applying to a not so popular school or a place with a lower salary, they will oftentimes make exceptions to this rule. But if you want a good paying job, a job that is easy, nice position, good job title, you most certainly will need a bachelor's degree and preferably one that is relevant to your job title. Of course, you will get experience in working here, but again, depending on where you are working, your degree does matter, and it also matters whether you have a bachelor's or a master's degree. So, keep all of those things in mind when you are choosing to study here in Japan. The next thing that you need to keep in mind is that it's not really easy to find programs here in Japan in which you can actually get a bachelor's or master's degree in education, um, physically going to a brick and mortar school here, which is why online schools will also be your best friend. You don't just have to go to school in person, um, like brick and mortar. You can also go to programs online. I spent time going to college before I physically came to Japan, as I said before, um, and I also did so afterwards. I'm still going to school online, and I'm also going to school in person if my schedule is busy and crazy. 
but it's ultimately worth it at the end of the day. You will give yourself other job options. So don't be afraid to, you know, choose a program here, you know, that allows you to study in Japan, but maybe you might also take other classes online so that you can get closer to the degree or goal that you have for yourself. Don't just settle for whatever opportunities or degrees that are offered at the school that you're going to abroad here in Japan. For example, there will almost always, as I talked about before, try to convince you to sign up for a degree in Asian Studies, Japanese Language, or in Business or Psychology, something that you probably don't want and or that's difficult to find a job in, in not only your home country, but even here in Japan. How many job positions ask for people that have a degree in Asian Studies? I've never seen one. But of course, there's some job out there that does exist. But again, the way that we learn about Asian history is very different from how they learn about Asian history. Not to mention, they don't want a foreigner telling them about their own history. But that's all a whole other story. I'm not going to go there with you again. Do what you want to do. But if you're asking me, I highly suggest getting a degree in elementary education. And I suggest switching between taking classes both in person in Japan as well as online. You don't have to wait until you come to Japan in order to sign up for classes. Also, a lot of you guys have inside of your mind, I'll make a separate video on this, that you want to do all four years in Japan because you have this whole little anime, um, you know, mindset of what you think school is going to be like. You're not going to be wearing little Japanese school uniforms. The people here are not going to be super sweet and nice and, you know, eating in McDonald's every day. That's high school type stuff. <laughs> so if that's what you want to do, you need to be going to a Japanese high school. And to be honest, any type of school that has, you know, a foreign exchange program, they already kind of don't run exactly like a normal Japanese high school. So to be honest, you really kind of just have to be Japanese to get that full Japanese school experience. But sure, you can wear a little sailor uniform if that's your thing. However, that is not something that you wear in college. So for that reason, I say, you know, get real with yourself and decide, do you really want to be in debt? Um, you know, stuff with a degree that you can put a job in, or do you want to be in debt but have a degree in which you can do what you truly love and you're studying what you're really interested in, regardless of what country you choose to live in. I hope you do love it here, but I do want you to also consider the fact that you might not, or that, you know, some type of circumstance might happen, whether it's a family issue, you start a family of your own, um, you have issues here in Japan, you just need to go back to your home country. Always have a backup plan. I've always wanted to be a teacher. And that's why I chose this. It has nothing to do with going to Japan. As I've mentioned before, I've actually studied other things. I actually went to college to be a pharmacy technician. I went to junior college for that. So there are different you know, things that you can choose to study, different fields you can go into. And without getting yourself into a lot of debt, don't be afraid to get certificates. Go to your junior college, on your community college, you know, and talk to people. Figure out what programs you can do and find online programs that you can do from home while you're still working before you come to the camp. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Another thing too, going back to the language ability, while generally speaking, knowing Japanese is not going to help you as far as getting more pull, but it does actually expand the amount of jobs that you can apply to. There are even some schools that do ask that you have Japanese language ability in order for you to apply to them. Generally, they only want you to have no higher than an M3 level, but some do ask for M2 and even M1. Those type of jobs are rare, and again, the pay is normally the same, if not just a little bit more. Thus, they're requiring more of you to get the job, but they're not paying you more for it. So these jobs are normally places in Tokyo where the job market is a lot more competitive, and people are fighting over the same jobs. Thus, they can ask and require more ridiculous things, whereas outside of Tokyo, they're just glad they have applicants inside of their job pool to begin with. They are not expecting you to be able to speak Japanese. The reality is the only time you'll be using Japanese, as I've said in other videos before, is when communicating with parents and or your coworkers and boss. They don't want you to be using Japanese when talking to the kids. Thus, it's kind of a use, you know, a waste. It's useless to even learn it because you're not going to use it for work. And this is where I'm getting at. I'm not saying it's useless or a waste to learn it because in general, because of course you can use it for yourself, help to get around in your day-to-day -day life without needing help, a translator, or assistance. But for that, you don't need to have, you know, any type of certification proven that you can speak Japanese or, you know, read or write it at a certain level. For that, you can easily just watch TV, you know, Japanese friends, date, you know, use the internet and learn without having to prove what level you're at or study any specific set of kanji or practice writing anything in particular. So, again, 
if you're trying to make yourself more marketable, then you do want to get a JLPT certificate. And I say set the bar low for yourself. If you tell yourself, oh, I need JL, you know, JLPT, whatever, you're going to get discouraged and you're going to try and you think, oh my god, I can't do it, it's too hard, and give up. Don't do that to yourself. Baby steps. Tell yourself, I want to pass JLPT and buy. And from there, work your way up. So one test at a time. If you set the you know, bar and say, okay, I have to have this degree, I need the certificate, you won't get anywhere because you're going to make yourself feel overwhelmed and stressed out, which is exactly what I did to myself. Learn at your own pace. My Japanese ability is still not where I want it to be despite having been there for a few years, and that's okay. I'm moving at my own pace, I'm getting better each year. I remember being here in Kansai when I first moved here after having been here in Japan for a year. I couldn't understand any kanji. It never crossed my mind to practice it. I told the story before, but I was so stupid, I couldn't find the entrance to the train station. It was in a weird spot, but there was a big sign telling you where the entrance was, and it said the name of the station. And I was pacing around trying to find it, and I'm like, oh my god, I don't see, where is it? I'm using Google Maps. And then I just took the risk, and I was like, these are the only stairs I see, it must be here. And sure enough, it was there. And ever since then, when I had gone back to my boyfriend, who I asked if here, does that sign say entrance, what does it say? Sure enough, it said the name of the station and it said entrance. But because I didn't know basic, simple kanji like that, I didn't understand it. It was telling me this is the entrance for this station. I could have saved myself a lot of time and prevented having a panic attack because I'm a very anxious person. <laughs> so, that's embarrassing. I look back on situations that I had at convenience stores where I wanted my feet to be warm, but I didn't know how to ask. I didn't know what the you know, cashier was asking me. And so they were asking me, do I want my food to microwave? And I was like, huh? And so they just gave up. Like, oh, never mind, just put it inside the back for me. So things like that. Baby steps. Be glad that you made small achievements and stuff. I was very, really, you know, happy and excited when I was finally able to order my own food at Kokorichi after my friend left. I made, you know, I made a point or whatever to make sure that I could speak Japanese well enough that I could order my own food. I started off going to a restaurant where the entire menu tried to be is in katakana, that's very easy for me to read and understand, it's a fast food place. Then from there, I moved on to going to other, you know, more traditional Japanese restaurants that aren't fast food, but they're more kanji. And of course, I cannot read and understand everything, but again, baby steps. I'm gaining more confidence, I can do more things by myself. So have the same type of attitude about studying Japanese. Again, I'm telling you how to make yourself more marketable, but you don't need to have any Japanese language ability, nor do you have to have a degree in order to work here as long as you have some kind of visa to start with. Neither of these things are needed. A degree is not needed. Um, language skills are not needed. But of course, they help you a lot here and they provide you with more job opportunities in Japan. As I've talked about this before in another video as well, um, if you're torn between the two, it is better to get an American degree over a Japanese one. I've talked about this before, but believe it or not, despite how hard Japanese elementary Junior high and high school is not tedious, it is with all the tests you have to do. Japanese college is actually very easy and they know that. In fact, it's seen as more uh, prestigious or whatever if you have graduated from an American university over Japanese. Because in American schools, we take things like work and attendance very seriously, whereas in Japanese schools, it's kind of like your relaxed period before you start, you know, going back into the real world and you work all day, every day, overtime, and stop. And yeah. <laughs> So it's more relaxed, um, the grades are more lenient, you don't do as much work, it's not so much based on attendance, it's just a very relaxed kind of class, more so than normal university. To be totally honest, I felt the way about my normal college classes, I felt like they were just lectures, and as long as you listen to the lecture, you can pretty much do the work, but Japanese college is even more so like that. Of course, you might have some difficult classes, there's different teachers, etc., but I'm generally speaking about how they go. Um, regardless of what the actual work is like, it is viewed upon more favorably to have graduated from the United States, uh, an American university, over a Japanese one. I know that you want to go to college in Japan, and as an American or another foreigner, you think it sounds more cool to say, oh, I went to college in Japan, I went to a Japanese university. But again, from a Japanese perspective, they're not so impressed. I mean, they are because the person they think is, oh my god, you can speak Japanese well enough to go to school with Japanese people? Oh, so cool, right? You choose the pen, stuff like that. But when it comes down to the resume, they are more impressed with someone that has an American degree over a Japanese one. Again, keep in mind, 
that you will more than likely be interviewing for a job teaching English, thus they kind of don't really care what your degree is in. Some companies do, particularly international schools, but at the end of the day, most companies aren't really fixated or worried about your actual degree. They care more about your visa status. As long as you can legally work in Japan, your degree is irrelevant, doesn't matter. You can have a degree in something in relation to engineering, being an electrician, um, you could be a doctor. They're going to pay all of you the same $25,000 a month, excuse me, $2,500, $2,500, I wish it was $25,000 um, a month or $250,000 yen. It's pretty much the average here. There are jobs that pay the less than that. You can get paid as little as 200,000 um, yen a month, which is roughly about 2,000 US dollars, really a little bit less than that. So yeah, and I guess that's kind of it. If you have more questions about what degree you should get, um, etc., please leave a comment down below or you can send me an email. Again, please keep in mind that different schools offer different programs and schools are constantly changing their programs and what they offer as well. I cannot hold your hand. I can only guide you. Um, I've given my recommendations of schools that you should go to, and I can tell you guys my experience. I did not do all four years here in Japan. I started off going to school before I came here. I've switched to other schools since I came here. I did not stay at one school. Um, so I'm not necessarily the best person to ask about that, but keep in mind that ultimately it doesn't really matter what you get a degree in. If you want to work here and you're a native English speaker, it will be very easy for you. If you're not a native English speaker, to be honest, no matter what you get a degree in, it's not going to change your opinion about you much. It's not so much the employer that you're trying to win over, it's the parents. And they don't care where you got your studies from, where you did whatever. It all comes down to what is your accent, where were you raised, what were your life experiences. They want someone that was born and raised in a native English speaking country. And sorry, but Americans are preferred at 9 out of 10 schools. Second to them is always people from the UK. And then, of course, or excuse me, Canadians, then the UK, and then, of course, Australia. So, that is that. I hope this video was useful, helpful to you. If you have any advice, your own opinions, please leave a comment down below. Send me a message if you have any questions. I will try my best to answer you. And again, it ultimately doesn't matter, but if you're asking me my own opinion, I recommend getting a degree in elementary education and trying your best to pass the JLPT PT and two. It would not necessarily result in more money but it gives you more job opportunities, and it's a win-win situation. More job opportunities, even if you don't get paid more, which more than likely you won't, it will help you in your day-to-day -day life get around easier if you know how to read, write, and speak at an JLPT M2 level. So, thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you will check out some of my other videos here. I have different playlists on different things um, in Japan. I have a blog that you can also read as well, and I hope that you will follow me on on Instagram and Twitter. I have a Snapchat and a Facebook page as well. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.